Hey guys and welcome to the Magic Dmitry channel. Today we're going to talk about UTM. Well guys, we talked about UTM virtualization um, before uh, for the M1 Mac specifically, but previously UTM used to be kind of not stable. There are many many troubles with it and I believe that UTM was not really really much usable maybe like six months ago and stuff like that. But now it's kind of improving and I see the UI is changing and make it just becoming much much better than it used to be before and now when I compare this with firmware fusion or other solutions like for example the parallels and everything I do believe that UTM is like unique because it allows you to actually virtualize the uh, different architectures like x86 for example and this actually opens like a new world for us right so basically UTM is much much better than other stuff right now in the sense that it's just more unique maybe the stability is still in the sense of improving but I do believe that UTM is first of all it's free you don't need to pay for anything and just basically like it's really good so today we're actually going to discuss a couple of things so first thing we're going to discuss is how how UTM is changed and what actually was improved in terms of UI and I guess stability as well. And the second thing guys is we want to discuss like the interesting operating system. Well, it's actually free DAS operating system like it just uh, open source implementation of DAS but with the UI. Basically there's a package called XF DAS and this distro allows you to just have a DAS with a UI, UI interface just in one package. It's really interesting. So let's go ahead and try this stuff. So first of all, you noticed when you like the main UI is pretty much the same with the UTM. Nothing has changed that much. But when you press plus button, you will have two options. You have virtualize and emulate options. And uh, emulate is actually what we're gonna use for using like different architectures like x86 on M1 Mac. But for the virtualization, guys, it's like you see those pre-configured options right there. You can just already select like Mac OS, for example, and it's like that. And it's actually quite interesting. Like Windows, for example, you can select the options here, and actually it has the option to download in Windows 11 for ARM 64. So it's like really, really nice. It's like it's all pre-configured and uh, in a good package. So it's nice. Uh, I believe this is just really improving in many ways. The emulate option is what I used for creating the XF DOS. So let's actually go ahead and see how I configure this. And when you open the edit option, you're gonna see that it's actually quite interesting. The stuff has changed around. You're gonna be mostly interested in this option, UEFI boot. So if this option is selected, of course, uh, DOS not gonna boot, DOS not gonna work, and all the operating system like Windows 98, Windows 2000, Windows XP, like whatever, we're not gonna boot. Only stuff like Windows 7 and up is going to work with this UEFI option. Another thing that I like about those options, basically, for example, drives, you can pick the drive and you can select the options right here, like interface and the uh, like delete drive options there so basically it's quite good before it used to be stacked all in one place and not really convenient so let's actually go ahead and boot xf dos and see how it works let's press that button i mean using dos is always exciting for me i just i love dos it's like brings me back into the 90s and all this and i even before those kind of ui kind of implementations just trying to simulate the, like real multitasking environment back in the dos but of course it's not that awesome <laughs> but it's, it works. So first of all, we need to remember that there is no mouse integration, so you need to press this button to actually go ahead and explore. Of course, this is a single task operating system. So basically every single application could be open, but the UI is gonna uh, basically quit. <laughs> so if you open this, for example, the writer, it's just loading the application, but of course it closes the UI of the of this shell. So this one is using SLVM UI on top of the free DAS, basically to show all the stuff to you. It actually looks like a modern operating system, like it has a start button, it has a run program. It even has the settings here, guys. I don't know, it's just so funny. Like settings, internet connection, TCP info, ping, or whatever, like, like so many options here. Okay, keyboard, Yugoslavia, what? It has the Yugoslavia option, interesting. <laughs> Yeah, what year it was developed? The SLVM, I guess it was developed kind of a long time ago. The screen, you can just change the screen resolution right here. And it actually basically emulates like a Windows environment, kind of like that. Basically just a shell for DOS. And when you press open file, for example, it just opens you like a file browser. And it's funny, it actually looks like Windows or something like that. But yeah, of course it's not. It just shows all the programs that are right here. And we're going to explore some of those. For example, if you open the spreadsheet, 
back in those days everybody cared about spreadsheets and working with documents well people do it those days as well but back then it was like a kind of revolution like everybody was like thinking about spreadsheets and all this so if you type something like test and then for example you press format and then font size how about this how about this font come on change come on come on does it even changing I, I think it changed something font size maybe i didn't really notice that switch it okay 40 will it actually change anything yeah it actually changed stuff and yeah you, you can also change the alignment it's kind of really slow how about user functions so what if we do like for example the home loan it's gonna just load the template people used for calculating calculating stuff around how can I actually save it so what if I press save as it's like SPS format what is that I don't even know what kind of format is that um, and then is there an option just to print okay save to print daily to export CSV okay CSV you can also save to CSV it's good CSV is a nice unique format it's good that basically you can save stuff to CSV at least a mastermind what is it is it some kind of game yeah i have no idea how to use it but yeah basically once you press the close button on any of those applications it just basically returns back to this uh, um, shell but it actually just relaunches it from the beginning so basically it just like restarts it completely this is how it works editor so editor i believe i just liked editor the most notepad <laughs> simple notepad it just gets the job done you can type stuff around and it's good would you like to save it no good so basically like a notepad but in ui it's actually quite productive to use stuff this way you can just type it around you don't need internet connection anything you can just save it to the flash drive and all that so you can use it but i believe this what this writer is actually quite good let's see yeah this one is quite good i like it i like it save as and it says html format what kind of format is actually gonna save it save as I don't know online help yeah online help of course so basically FLTK it looks like it's a UI uh, toolkit that you can use on top of this environment which is quite cool so export RTF okay and I can save RTF as but how do I type the file name okay cannot open file. okay I, I believe this drive is read only that's why it doesn't work so I need to actually set specific uh, like second drive for the right purposes the paint application let's see what year it was developed in and guys remember this is dos and everything you can move windows around you can pretend that you'd like in a multi tasking kind of application but it's not it's just like all a single task app it was built in 2002 it looks like quite a long time ago file new okay okay and then i can just like write it like this and i can use all the shapes and everything like this one for example yeah i mean it's like a photoshop of the past i guess you can use it but of course it's really really unique <laughs> i would say interesting really really interesting it restarts this whole shell every time what about games what do i have here uh okay doesn't seem to have games this is like a web browser i believe but i don't think i have internet access here let's see how it works yeah it's like a web browser for dust and actually i believe i tried it before it's kind of nice of course it's not html5 and all that compatible i do believe it's like really really old not even sure how it's gonna support the modern standards guys but it's nice so yeah like when you use this kind of web browser and all the, and so kind of graphical you start to think that dos basically is quite usable those days and you can even use it in some old machines but the problem is like do you actually want to do that or not like i probably don't but it's kind of fun just to sometimes open it and see how it works so daily journal what is that it's like a um, kind of journal application for taking notes so yes yeah, like contacts to do how does it work okay i can say test gosh it's so slow holidays you can add a holiday here add it's just so slow guys i don't know it's actually using 128 megabytes of ram i believe but it's not really utilizing this stuff it's just so slow or maybe maybe i forgot some driver like maybe some driver for the extended memory is not there maybe that's why it's slow okay is it stuck no it's not so calculator it's kind of regular calculator application but it's so slow i don't know why what's what's happening here guys <laughs> okay this is how it looks guys mpx play i believe it's just some kind of uh, music player application i believe you can pick some media files oh yeah 
so basically like a media application here guys and you know guys after playing around with this one for a while i believe that you can actually use it you can use it for your old like dos games and everything you can just use it as a graphical environment to launch this stuff slvm seems like nothing more like a launcher but it's also using some kind of additional ui toolkit so basically it's like a free dos this slvm kind of uh, ui environment and fltk kind of uh, toolkit that's using all this window kind of rendering stuff looks like so basically there are some components stacked together that look like a ui environment and this is what it is guys you can use it for launching your old uh, dos applications and stuff like that so it's quite interesting all right guys thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel there will be more videos and please try this one out i'm gonna just leave the link down below you can try it out and see for yourself it's nice you can use it on your m1 mac i believe it might be slow as well because of this x86 simulation but i don't know it's, it's dust right it should be really really fast so of course you can use it on your old hardware and 486 kind of hardware for example like from the past from the 90s pentium one or something like that so you can you can try it and see how it works all right guys thank you and bye bye